Good day, Dr. Chris Zeno. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are awesomely happy to have you here. Please uh, uh, accept our sincere gratitude for taking the time and coming to our program. Thank you so much, and uh, I appreciate everybody who's watching or listening. We'll get a lot of value out of tonight for sure. Great. Uh, so please, uh, Dr. Zeno, give us an introduction. Let us know what you do, how you go about doing it, and we go from there. Okay, so so many places to start. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a doctor chiropractic right here in the Woodlands, Texas. I also have a, a regenerative medicine clinic that deals in uh, umbilical cord allografts as well to help uh, more orthopedic conditions. And then uh, I do a lot of stuff uh, outside and online as well, coaching, life coaching, and uh, in, in, even in related to the, uh, the fitness and health field as well. So, yeah, I have a bunch of things I could really go with any direction you want me to here and whatever the viewers uh, have asked you. Let's, uh, let's give them what they, what they look for. Fantastic. And uh, in modesty, uh, Dr. Zeno, he's an author, world-renowned speaker. He has spoken in more than 5,000 places. And he is the winner of Mr. America of 1998. Mm -hmm. So, um, Doc, as you know, these days, uh, wellness uh, has become one of the most talked about and basically mm -hmm. seeked. So how do you define wellness and uh, how do you go about seeking it? I think that's a great question because if I was to ask, if we were to ask, uh, you know, a hundred people, what, what is wellness or what makes you healthy? You're going to get a hundred different answers. Unfortunately, you know, someone might say I'm healthy or I'm well, if I look good or if I feel good, if I'm spiritually grounded, if I'm happy, uh, if I'm successful, you know, you're going to have all these different things. So, uh, but I think a lot of times people will describe wellness as they look good or they feel good, and therefore I'm in wellness. But the problem with, if you just go on how you look or feel, you miss the top three killers that affects everybody. You know, you, you can have, you know, heart disease you miss, cancer you miss, you miss, you can have heart disease and cancer and not feel a thing, right? So if you just base your health on how you look or how you feel, you miss those disease killers. And then if you mask your, if, and then when the day you don't look good or feel good, if you mask it with the medication to feel good again, then the problem's still there anyway. So I believe when it comes to wellness, it's not just how you look or how you feel. And I think all of us know someone that we love and cared about that was affected by heart disease or cancer, and they looked good or felt good at one point, and all of a sudden they got diagnosed. Uh, well, true wellness is that the body is functioning and operating and healing at its optimal potential the way it was created to, with no interference. That would be what wellness is. And, that, and you could use that same principle in, in mentally, physically, and socially, and spiritually, right? So it's my body functioning as it was created to, you know, without interference, you know, my, my relationships, you know, that's a great definition when it comes to wellness in any area of your life. Fantastic. And uh, I was reading somewhere that you were diagnosed with some sort of a debilitating mm -hmm. disease in your 20s. Yeah. And... and uh, if you wish to elaborate on that. Yeah, absolutely. So here I won Mr. American almost 21 and I got to, you know, train different celebrities and I was in Orlando, Florida. So I had a great career. And then see the reason why I say it, you can even see it where it is right there. You know, there's, I was on cover of magazines, you know, I mean, you know, so I, I, because I was on the cover of magazines, you know, I was the one that I exhibited what health was to the public, right? So I'm on a cover magazine. It's a health magazine. It's a fitness magazine. So therefore I'm healthy. I felt good. I mean, I know I exercised right. I ate right. I did my workouts and I was really, really lean, but not realizing that that wasn't what health was. And then I'm see, and, and that person that we're talking about, you know, when I was in my twenties was diagnosed with an incurable terminal disease called ulcerative colitis an autoimmune disease where my immune system was eating and attacking and destroying my, itself, particularly the colon area. I did all the drugs in the world. You can name it like as far as for treatments. I did all those drugs. Nothing was working. I went from 230 pounds down to 158 pounds in about four months. Wow. And the only option was to remove my colon. That's, that's the only option I had. So a lot of times the healthcare system, my only option was drugs. They didn't work. Now surgery. And I was about a week and a half away of getting my colon removed. And that's when I decided that I had a, there, there, there's got to be a better way, you know, because if you're facing anything, you realize like if you tried everything, you would have had your results. So I realized that the roller coaster I was on covering it with symptoms and drugs wasn't working. So I went on my own journey at that point to discover, you know, how to heal the body from the inside out, that the body has everything it needs. And that took me on a long, a very long and scary journey 
into the reason why I'm a chiropractor today. So chiropractic for me or my nervous system was the blind spot in my health that was damaged and interfered with and getting that under control and repaired and corrected or adjusted. That was, uh, that's what did it for me. And therefore I chose that as my career. I went back to school for it. Fantastic. Now, when it comes to wellness and our, I guess discipline goes a long yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, if you could please speak some to discipline, especially when it comes to uh, your eating habits yeah. and your workouts, because it's an ongoing uh, endeavor. Every day you wake up, you have to do the same thing. Yeah, it's when you really, when I tell people, you got to really stack the whys. You know, so why do I work out? Why do I get like from morning? I wake up and I do cardio in the morning. I don't, I want to sleep. And let, let, let me tell everybody, when you're watching this, the morning always feels like the morning. Like there's, it's never exciting to wake up and go uh, exercise. It always feels the same. It's never got better. So therefore, willpower doesn't work. You need more of why power. Like why am I doing this? So if your why is big enough, you'll be able to get through those times. And there's different, there's actually different tactical things we could do that we'll share today. So the reason why you do is you have big why. So I stack it. So to me to just wake up at 4.30 in the morning and get on a treadmill, that's not a big enough why. But I know if I wake up early, getting on that treadmill, it's, uh, believe it or not, when you walk and do exercise, it stimulates the brain. It's like, a, it's like a generator for the brain. So it allows me to be focused for later day in work. It, I, it allows me to be on my A game. When I do that treadmill or that whatever I'm doing, I'm listening to podcasts. So I'm personally developing at the same time, right? I'm feeding my my, I'm brainwashing my, my, my mind with good material that's edifying and, and keeps me focused in business. So I'm learning, right? And I, I, I stack all these things. And plus, I like knowing by eight in the morning, you know, I did more things than most people did. So it's a success trait. And a couple of things I do to, to actually tactically to get up, you know, when your alarm, like on your phone, when your alarm goes off, the snooze button is the biggest button on that phone. So what I do, what I started doing, because I'm just like anybody else, I don't want to wake up. I put my phone in the other room. Reason being is when that phone goes off, I have to get up, walk at least 15 steps to turn it off. And by the time that happens, I'm up. So I do little things like that. Or sometimes if you're having trouble to wake up early, I'll, I'll actually put on clean gym clothes and that's what I go to bed in. You know, they're clean. And so I go to sleep. So when I wake up, I'm already dressed and ready to go. So there's all these little things you could do, but it really comes down to why, because like, I have these goals. So before you I, I love what you said. It's a, it's, an, it's a forever thing. So when it comes to a diet, when someone says, well, what's the best diet or what's the best training routine? My answer is always this. The best one is the one that you could stick to for the rest of your life. So if you could do this diet 80% for the rest of your life, that's the perfect one. So I love it. In, in your mind, like this is, a, this is not a journey. It's for the rest of my life. And what can I be most consistent to? So if I know that, and what, what do I do? So when I sleep in, it's not going against my goals. So now it's goal stacking. If I don't work out, it's going against my goals. What's my goal is to look a certain way, to function a certain way, to be in a certain level of wellness. And my health then, it, it compounds. You can see how I stack things to justify it. It compounds into my work. When I'm, taking, when I'm eating right and exercising and waking up early and doing my, my, my morning rituals and my routine, I am sharp at work. You know, my, I, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking right. I'm taking care of patients so they have the best version of me. So now the way I eat and how I exercise affects how I take care of my patients. And then financially, if I'm doing better at work and taking care of better people, I'm going to see more patients. More patients will exchange money value with me. Therefore, it impacts my financial status. So all this trickles down to me waking up and walking on a treadmill. So wow. when you're able to stack things so much, it's like that treadmill is – how I am, how I relate. How, my treadmill allows me uh, to have a better relationship with you, to take care of my patients better, to feel better, to be in better shape, to live longer with vitality. So I stack it so high that even though I'm tired and I don't want to wake up and it's cold, I know that all those things are on the line. So when I suck at work that day, oh yeah, no kidding. I, I didn't do my morning routine. When I didn't make that sale I needed to, yeah, no kidding. You ate crappy the night before and you were kind of lazy and lackadaisical. So I realized that when it comes down to exercising and food, when you realize that it affects every single area of your life, your relationships, your sex life, your, uh, your financial life, your business life, then you realize when you realize how important that is, it just makes waking up and doing it a little bit easier to do. Well, it's, uh, you brought a great point up that you uh, value the 
best version of you the way you want it. Yeah. And nobody deserves this more than your own family, your own kids. Mm -hmm. And when you don't stack it high enough, uh, your values change. And obviously, your family suffer first. And then it's basically domino effect that everybody, uh, you know, feels the effect. Now, to give us some incentives to eat better, how do you stack there? What do you do to give us that incentive? Because as you know, everything that's bad for you tastes great. Yeah. It usually gets to it as great as, it, as we can make an incentive. Like, oh, you'll look, you'll look better in, that, in those clothes or you'll feel better. They're all pleasurable things. But unfortunately, the human mind, it likes, to, it likes to run away from pain more than it wants to seek pleasure. The, the reason being is eating pizza and ice cream is pleasurable in that moment, right? So that's actually, if you're looking, so we're looking for pleasure. I have seen this time and time again, a person will start and stop, start and stop, diet, exercise, start and stop. Unfortunately, there has to come a day of personal disgust. That, I, that's when the person looks in the mirror and they're like, enough's enough. Like they're so disgusted with the circumstance that in that moment, like that, everything changes. They just, it, you, you just got to get to a part or a point in life where you will no longer abuse yourself like that anymore. Now, I, what I mean by abuse is like you just allow things to get out of control to a point where you realize I did this to myself. And I'm drawing the line in the sand. So it usually comes from a moment of uh, disgust or the other time it happens incentive wise is uh, an act of health terrorism. What do I mean by health terrorism? It's when you go to the doctor because you had chest pain and they said you had two clogged arteries or it's when you found out you had stage two cancer. It's like there has to be this act of health terrorism for someone to say, oh, okay, okay, I I I'll start, I'll, I'll start doing right. So unfortunately, it has to take that painful moment for things to like shift. And the key is momentum. Like a study showed that you ever hear like it takes 20 something days to build a, a habit, right? But it actually takes 66.8 days. Don't tell me how they got the 0.8, 66.8 days to where when you don't do the habit, it's more painful not to do it than to do it. You follow what I'm saying? So yeah. we just don't want to build a habit because we could break that like that. I think we've all experienced breaking a habit like mm -hmm. that. But about two, two, and two months or a little bit over two months, then it's like, not only do I have a habit, but when I don't do it, it's actually more painful than the act of actually doing it. That's where we want to get to because now we have what we call conscious competence. That means we know what we're doing and we know that, hey, listen, if I don't wake up tomorrow morning, like the other day, and, it, and but we still have times where we could you know, lose it. So uh, the other day, I slept in, right? So I slept in, I woke up at 9 a.m., no big deal, right? But for me, I'm like, wow, that was five hours of my time, personal development time, study time, exercise time that I slept through. And it's like, wow, like I missed out on so much of that stuff. So it was more painful for me to sleep until nine, looking back going, wow, I missed five hours. And if you just wake up one hour earlier, it's equivalent to what? Like, 740 hour weeks or something True. amazing like That's that great. at the yeah. end of the year. So you have the time you have, you can make, you could expand time by just making that little bit of extra effort. So it's, we want to get it to the, unfortunately the incentive comes usually from something negative uh, because if it's pleasurable, like I'm going to go on a cruise or um, in next August, uh, we're going to have a wedding and I'm going to get in shape for that. But what happens after that? There's no goal anymore, so you just fall off the wagon. But when someone says, hey, listen, you have heart disease or you have cancer or you have diabetes or um, a loved one dies or you, you're disgusted with yourself, that's usually, unfortunately, when the change happens because we fail, we have to learn how to future pace. And future pacing is helpful. Like, like I just said right now, what if you don't wake up tomorrow or what if you don't eat right tomorrow? And then start future pacing. Well, I'm going to start gaining weight. I'm going to be higher of a risk for uh, heart disease or cancer. So if you could start future pacing, maybe the thought of the future will be so much so painful that it'll cause you to incentivize you. So I find that it, it's unfortunately uh, people make changes during a, a very disgusted period of their life. You know, it's uh, uh, just furthermore that diets are just diets. We are looking after lifestyle changes. Yeah. 
forever in order to stay healthy forever. it's like going to gym you're going to work out your muscle yeah. you need to work out your mind you got to work out your diet so it's a lifestyle that it goes on forever yeah and now the other day i was reading a study there was a book called the uh, sugar crash mm-hmm. and uh, the effect of sugar in today's society is absolutely amazing mm-hmm. most of the inflammatory diseases as we know it they say that must be caused by sugar now uh, obviously sugars are great you know people love it how do you combat that urge of eating the sugar because sugar is one of the things sugar and carbohydrates is one of the yeah. biggest thing that people you know have trouble with yeah, it's well. Let's make sure that you know. Well, a you don't starve yourself, right? Because let's say if you're like, well, I'm not going to eat or something. Well, that what happens? Then you're going to crave that stuff, right? So it's making sure that you have all the macronutrients in your diet. What that means is you make sure you have protein every day and carbohydrates every day and vegetables every day. Like you, 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 the body should never feel like it's missing out on something. That's why I don't like fad diets where you take out all the carbs, you take out all the fat. It's the it's only short term. You know, eventually your body's going to rebound it and, and, and go for it. So when it comes to sugar, I notice that the longer you go without it, then the craving starts to get quieter. Uh, it doesn't go away. It gets quieter. And then you get this routine because you're feeling good. When you're eating correctly and exercising, your brain chemicals align, meaning that your, your, your endorphins are released where you're, you're not self-sabotaging yourself. We don't need sugar for comfort, right? When you're feeling good, you don't need that sugar for comfort, which we usually go to because we want to feel good. So I find that when you fast from it, but I'll tell you, you know, like come, you you start bringing it back in the diet again, like that, your body gets a taste of it and it could start this roller coaster again. So it's, it's, it's the, do the best you can. If you could go three days without it, great. Then now you go five days without it, great. And then, you know, then you'll start seeing, you'll go longer and longer to where the craving gets quieter. It doesn't fully go away. So I would definitely say, just do your best to say, I'm going to go two days. All right. Then I'll go after two days. I'm going to go three days and really start um, really uh, extending the time in between high sugar intake. And then there'll be a point where you'll uh, not crave it as much, but it's always there. Sugar tastes good to everybody. It does. It certainly does. Now for our mind, obviously we use, we need to exercise it as much as we do for our muscles. How is it that you go on doing and staying the way you are? What's the mindset? What is, beside the, obviously the goals that you have and what is that mindset? What is it that you do in personal development that keeps you driven? Well, I believe I I tell someone, just try like, so you have the books behind you on your shelf. It's like, I just tell someone, just wake up and read a chapter of something, uh, a book that you want to every single day. And in a month, it'll change your life because you're going to be like, you're going to be so glad you did. So it becomes addicting. You get an addiction, just like you get addicted to sugar, you could get addicted to good things too. And so I read so many books that I normally wouldn't have read one chapter at a time. I mean, a couple pages a day, you wind up reading books and books. And and I realized after a while, like what I read in that book, I was able to apply that day. Or what I read in that book, I was in a conversation, I was able to apply that. So what I ran at when I started personally develop, so that could be books, that could be watching YouTube videos on your phone, that could be listening to podcasts. I found that it is actually not just helping me and changing my perception of life and keeping me sharp as an ax, but I found that it, it was living and active. That when I read something, it actually helped, it applied to something or someone during that day. So when those coincidences started happening, I realized that this was, this was living and active. This was almost like a guide for me uh, in my life. And you do that for a couple months or a couple of years, you'll need a telescope to see how far you came. It's amazing that the small incrementing compound effects of uh, mindset, the mindset shift or perceptual change and maturity and, and uh, intellectual uh, awareness of self-awareness will change your life. It's, it's, um, it's actually building a relationship with yourself, which many people don't. Many, t- many of the people I coach, the first relationship we work on is with themselves. I have to reintroduce them to themselves. It's the relationship that's been the least developed. And uh, that's why I think taking that time for yourself is the greatest act of love you could do. Wow. Self-love is one thing this society has definitely forgotten. 
and it's so cliche. Everybody says, "Oh no, I love myself," but people really don't. Yeah. I mean, how many times people stand in front of a mirror and say, "You know what? You're doing okay. Yeah. I love you." Anyhow, but getting to that point, we're going to get to chiropractic and definitely uh, stem cell because stem cell is one thing I read. You know, mm-hmm. um, with chiropractic, a lot of people wait till they're absolutely in agony or something is hurting to go see a chiropractor. What is your advice? What do you tell your patient? What approach do you get to them? Well, chiropractic isn't just to cover symptoms. The truth of it is it's maximizing the potential of the nervous system of the body. So we know our brain controls everything, right? And the brain sends life through your spinal cord, which comes out of nerves, and your spine protects it. So it's, if your spine's damaged in any way, shape, or form or degenerating, it's going to irritate the nervous system function. So those nerve roots go to organs and cells and tissues and muscles. So it's not about pain relief. It's about, it's about getting your body to function the way it used to. It's about getting you back to normal. And so it's like I use the analogy of teeth. That's the best way to do it. You know, you don't brush your teeth when you have cavities, you know, you just do it all the time. It's, it's, it's uh, dental hygiene. Well, spinal hygiene is even more important because the literal life of your, the lifeline of your entire body, your existence deals with the spine and the nervous system. So the problem is you just didn't know it. It's a huge blind spot. You need to take care of your teeth. We know how to change the oil on our car. We know how to put a battery in our, in our fire alarm detector, but no one taught you that you could actually maintain your spine, you know, and it's just like your teeth. So when you see it as that way, maintain your spine is basically maintaining the nervous system without interference. So every message from the brain can, can get optimally to every organ, cell, or tissue in its optimal form. And people are like, well, what's that going to cure? It's like, it's not about curing this or curing that. It's like, if someone has a lower back pain, I would say, would you rather have lower back pain with interference in your nervous system? Or would you rather have lower back pain without any interference in your nervous system? Which person is in the better environment to be able to heal? Mm-hmm. And of course, it's without nervous system interference. So regardless of your symptom, you know, chiropractic is not a symptom uh, a modality. It's, it's, it's human potential. It really is. It's optimal function of the body. Amazing. Now, going back to what you said about coaching and uh, how people react, uh, some of the habits as we have, for example, our eating, now working out, is all on the mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, give us some pearls on that. Give us yeah. some, some little things that we can all exercise to make us a better person inside and out. Well, it could actually come from social heredity. You know, not genetic heredity, it's social heredity. It's the way we were raised. You know, I, I was raised in a half Middle Eastern, half Italian family. So food was surrounded by good events. Everything was surrounded by food. There was food everywhere. So to me, I associate it with comfort and love and uh, family. Like there's a, lot of, there's a lot of emotion and heart that go behind food for me. Mm-hmm. And so it's amazing. I pick something that uh, I have to actually, you know, discipline myself from most of those foods uh, because I saw what it did to my family. So there's the pain. I saw what it did to my daddy. He died of cancer at 68. You know, uh, my mom's doing amazing, thank God, because she chose a different path, right? So I was able to see the contrast. So when it comes to the mindset with the food is, you know, here's the thing. When you're not eating right, when you're not exercising, when you're overweight, no one feels great at all. You feel depressed. You don't like the way you look. It serves no purpose, at all. Fat doesn't serve any purpose on the human body. We're not, we're not uh, living in a famine. It's like, you know, it doesn't serve any purpose health-wise. Um, it does social-wise. It just, it actually winds up, it puts you in a shell. And so again, like the outer approach of someone, when you see someone who's not unhealthy, it really reflects again on them. It's not, there's no judgment here at all, but it shows that this person is, it's, it's, uh, they're not loving themselves. Otherwise they would not do that. They're hiding behind something. You know, no one would love themselves and put them at risk for disease and death or that of their loved ones. But the thing is, well, why are we going, why are we treating food as a crutch? Because it's comfort. Like someone uses drugs, someone might use other uh, things to be destructive against themselves. Pornography, cheating, affairs. Some people use food, right? Some people use alcohol. And it's all a destructive behavior because it's not coming from the necessity of nutrition. It's coming from another it's coming from stress. It's coming from emotion. It's from, coming from coping. It's a codependent self-sabotage that we need to get to the root of that. 
And that's why that personal development stuff really, really helps. Because and now there's a difference. There's a difference between self help and personal development. Self help is rah rah. Um, you know, there's no weeds. There's no weeds. There's no weeds. No, no. That's that's just. It's like using spells. There's there's no such like personal development is really working and getting familiar with yourself and really working on you like a muscle to really um, break a generational heredity as in social heredity and to really take charge over your life and to maybe love yourself enough or have a much confidence in yourself to say, listen, I'm not going to treat myself like that anymore. Just like you would not allow yourself to get abused by someone. Mm -hmm. You know, food could be a form of abuse to you and you don't realize it. And so when you start seeing that, like, what am I doing? Am I, am I moving towards my goals? Am I, am I, and a goal to you could be a goal at work, a financial goal uh, to be around for your grandkids. Are you moving towards your goals or is that thing moving you away from your goals? And it becomes a, a matter of what we call um, survival value. Survival value is like a scale, right? Imagine there's two scales, right? Like, so at the end of the day, did I do more things that increase my survival value or things that actually decrease my survival value? So we're not saying to be perfect, but you at least got to be thinking, is this helping me? Like, listen to this right here. This is helping your survival value. If you're to watch, um, if you just be scrolling on Facebook or Instagram right now, numbing yourself, that would be negative survival value. So what are things are you listening to, thinking of doing that are increasing your chance of a better quality of life? No. With uh, personal development, mm -hmm. uh, especially having a mentor does help a lot. And knowing that you coach many, many doctors, athletes, people who are in the health industry, what is one common obstacle that we all have? You touched on it before, mm -hmm. but I just want you to get into a bit more detail. Yeah, um, well, I think one thing I find that's very effective is accountability because remember we'll let ourselves down. I'll let myself down, but I won't let you down. So if mm -hmm. I know that, like you find what I'm saying, like I, it's so much easier to let myself down, but, I, but if I know that you're counting on me, I, I won't, I won't let you down. So I think the great thing about coaching is just accountability. Accountability is the glue mm -hmm. that makes that goal work. It, it's the thing that sticks that glue to it's the glue. So I just think a coaching is basically accountability and getting the approval of somebody else. But at the same time, you know, that only goes so far. It's like we, we can't be so worried about the approval of others. We have to be, you know, we have to be uh, dependent of that, you know, and take full responsibility. But I find that it's accountability factor on a different level. Wow. That opens up a whole new bunch yeah. of uh, avenues, but uh, I know the time is limited, but let's talk about regenerative medicine mm -hmm. and stem cell, please. Yeah. As it is new, and unfortunately in Canada, we are not very privy to it, so a lot of our listeners, I'm yeah. sure, will enjoy this conversation. Yeah, so we work, uh, we started to, with my patients, I was able to help their spine, but when they, there was orthopedic conditions like shoulders, elbows, knees, and neuropathy, you know, there was not much I could do because they were, you know, they were degenerated or, or losing tissue. And so the, uh, the umbilical cord tissue or the, uh, the umbilical cord matrix tissue in there has different therapeutic molecules as well as stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells. And they actually divide and replicate themselves, but they also regenerate. They regenerate soft tissue like cartilage and muscles and tendons. They, uh, they regenerate nerve tissue and capillaries for blood flow. So in Texas, I'm able to, to help people with neuropathy and orthopedic conditions like joints it's amazing. It actually will increase and regrow the joint in that area, helping thousands of people avoid surgery, get their life back. And the way I got into it was my mom. She actually, the reason why I did, because I, I, I had to vindicate her. She actually went to a, a stem cell seminar in the States, got a treatment done, a type of treatment, and had a horrible experience for her knees. My mom's in her 80s, right? So I wanted to get her life back. And then I realized, well, why'd she have such a horrible experience and I went I did my own research and saw what she did and there's many different areas you get stem cells from there's many different uh, places to do it and I realized I realized why why she didn't respond well and I really went on this whole journey of trying to get her life back and that's when we started working with and I, that's that's when I got into that because I was able to find the specific ways and the specific tissues and now here she is a year later doing amazing avoided all knee surgery happy healthy no no pain no drugs able to sleep better 
And so again, I don't do anything without having a personal experience in it. Right. Yeah. So I don't just read a book and say, this is a good thing to do. Like, you know, it's something that I have an emotional connection to because then I know I could talk about it because I believe in it so much because I've seen it work in my life or someone I really love and care about. And it helped me too. You know, I love to work out. You know, I got to work on patients. My shoulder was going. So uh, it got my shoulder back and my sacrum back, you know, from bending over tables. And it really uh, it prolonged my career for sure and my hobby that I love to do. So we've been helping uh, over 51,000 people. Wow. I've uh, gotten this procedure done in the States and they're doing amazing. Yeah. Incredible. Now, yeah. when you say umbilical cord, does it come from their umbilical cord or does it come from fetus umbilical cord? Great question. No, it comes from fresh, young, brand new, living um, mommy's umbilical cord, not theirs. You know, it's something we wanted fresh and ready to go. So as soon as that mom, if, they, if they're within the study, they harvest it, put it on dry ice, they check it for endotoxins, diseases, purify it so there's no blood or amniotic fluid, and uh, keep those cells living and viable. So yeah, it's fresh fresh, fresh from uh, the, the tissue of the umbilical cord. And, you know, there's other areas that you got to watch out though, like outside the United States, Canada would never allow this either, but outside in other countries, you know, people are getting stem cells from embryonic sources, which is aborted fetal tissue, from bone marrow, from fat sources. So there's different ways of harvesting it. So we want to make sure that we have the one that has no biological markers, no amino reactions coming from a fresh, healthy source, young, powerful cells. Wow. Now, uh, these uh, uh, umbilical cords, are they, are, do you guys harvest them at the specific location or a hospital or a place? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah it's a, it's be, a, do they have to be related? Uh, re well, there's no biological markers, so there doesn't have to be a relation, which is great. There's no reaction from the immune system. Uh, what they do is the mom, it has to be a healthy mom, healthy child, father. They're tested from the beginning of the pregnancy through the entire pregnancy. They're watching if that, at that birth when it's a healthy mom and healthy baby at that birth because they follow them. At that time, they'll, they'll take the umbilical cord, dry ice it, liquid nitrogen, send it to the lab. And at the lab, they then purify it and everything like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's a very, very rigorous protocol. Uh, to be to, to apply and actually be a donor. Wow. Uh, I guess that leaves it for another topic that we have to get yeah. you back on again. Now, I'll Dr. Zeno, please, uh, uh, what books are you reading now? Uh, give me a couple yeah. of books that you yeah. have read. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The ones I'm actually reading now is uh, U Squared, Y O U Squared. Uh, by uh, Pritchett, P R I T J, Pritchett. You'll see U squared and Quantum Leap. He made, it's both his books. So they're very tiny, they're very thick. What I love about them, each chapter is one page. And that's, this is, if you're watching, that this is perfect for you because it literally is just, you could read one page a day and meditate on it. Like read it and that's it. Don't try to, read, you could read the whole book in probably an hour, but just read one page and then learn it, understand it. Because a lot of times, you know, someone said, yeah, I read 70 books this year. I'm like, how'd you read it? Well, I listened to 70 books. You didn't absorb that stuff. I would rather you take one book and read it 70 times during the year than mm -hmm. to read 70 books. So just take one thing um, and absorb it, learn it. Like when I read something, I'll take notes on my phone. I make like a little book report. And, but really when you're reading something, uh, really absorb it, apply it and uh, make it living and active in your life. It's no rush. If you just read uh those books are good. Um, another one that's really good is there's no, there's no B, uh, there's no, uh, by Bo Eason, there's no plan B for your A game. That's a really, really good one. Uh, great one. He's a, I know him personally too. So that's a great one. There's so many good books, but that is actually the ones that I have uh, read the last month. Perfect. Oh, oh, and, and Psycho Cybergenic, Psycho Cyber, Psycho, Psycho, Psycho Cybernetics by uh, uh, Maxwell or something. It's about, Basically, it's in, from the 60s saying that we have, a, we have like a thermostat, our belief system is like a thermostat, and uh, we, it will not allow us to be more successful than we are now. And if we go, like, it just, it's something, it's a paradigm that we need to break. Great book. So uh, that's, all those books are very similar. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Zeno, uh, I know you graduated in 2005. Yeah. So if yeah. I took you back to 2005 with everything you know now, mm -hmm. What would you tell your younger version? I, uh, I, love, the I love the time machine question. I would uh, put my hand on his shoulder and be like, I just want to thank you for being faithful. 
for gonna go, you're about to go through something that you know you're gonna go through a lot of tough times and just stay uh, just stay faithful and, and focused on your your end goal and you'll be great. I wouldn't tell myself anything because if I told myself something that avoided a lot of the pain I went through and the trials I went through, I would have never learned the things that I needed to learn on a visceral level to become successful. So oh, that's wow. why, like, uh, as much as I would want a time machine, uh, some of the some of the the most uncomfortable times is what is what made me who I was and why would I take that away from myself? You know, so I would just, I would just appreciate myself. Just like if my, um, if my 65 year old self came and down and talked to me now, I, I would expect him to say the same thing. You're going to go through a big journey. You're going to go through some ups and downs. Just keep focused. You know, I appreciate you. I love you. And it's going to actually turn out better than you thought. And I'll be like, well, what was it? What am I going to do? Don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll figure it out. And I have to, it's, it's, it's the, I never failed in life. I had a lot of learning. I would say I have a lot, a lot of learning, a lot of learning curves in my life, a lot of zigs and a lot of zags, but man, you know, I, I, I learned from those. That was my best teachers. It was never my wins. All my wins and all my successes were never teaching moments at all. It was all that crap in between that sucked that, uh, that really was a blessing looking back. You know, Dr. Zeno, uh with what you say, difficulties are not in our way, it's on our way yeah. to our destiny. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in a lot of coachings, you have heard about the uh, uh, examples of tugboat and lighthouse. Yeah. Are you a tugboat or are you a lighthouse? Uh, well, I think I'm a lighthouse. For, I'm, a, I'm a lighthouse for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, I, when I'm a tugboat, I try to not be a tugboat for too many people. <laughs> but no, you're absolutely right. Like what I tell people is your, your, your vision is the lighthouse and your purpose is what pushes you towards that. So as long as that purpose gives you the drive and the lighthouse, but you know, you're, you're, you're going to be off course. You're going to be off course about 90 something percent of the time. That's that whole psycho cybernetics talking about like you're a plane's off course, 90, over 90% 90 of the time. Amazing. So imagine that. Imagine if your life is off course over 90% of the time, yet that's a, that's a typical plane flight every single day. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible how our journey begins and where it ends. Yeah. But I guess the key is never to lose sight of the goal. Yeah, that vision. That, and, uh, you know, if I was to tell my kids, you know, one main thing, uh, it would be never lower the target. Because every time I lowered the target, I regret it so much. I resent it. That's the only thing I resent and regret in my life is there was things in my life that I lowered the target because of insecurities. I, I thought I would be alone. I thought, I, I, I thought, well, maybe I should just, this is good enough. Maybe, I, you know what I mean? Like I just, was, I just didn't think it would happen or I wouldn't, it wouldn't get, I wouldn't reach it. Or maybe I should just, I should just cast the chips in now and mm -hmm. be happy. Um, outing your own abilities holy crap only resentment i have in life because i lower the target Incredible. i would rather you be i would rather you be on your journey not knowing when you're going than to lower the target never settle at all so you are with that whole 10x idea that you should expect 10 times more of yourself and have your goals 10 times higher than what you think you should be achieving well i, I not even that it's just like whatever the goals you have like don't sell for <laughs> Don't say they don't even have to be 10 X. Like at least the ones that you have and dream about don't lower the target on those. So okay. and I don't even think they have to be 10 X that it just like, at least how about, how about like this? I actually lowered the target on my one X goals follow, let mm -hmm. alone 10 X. Right. So um, I didn't believe in myself about my one X and wow. that was just something I regret. I regret resent, but I, I'm, you know, I, I, but I learned that lesson. I learned that lesson. Now, Never lower the target. And man, I still, I'm tempted on a lot of things. And I tell myself, remember, I'm like, you're right. <laughs> Never lower the target. You're right. And it's just, uh, cause it's that voice is just telling you, eh, it's okay. Like you say, we'll just cruise. Things are great. Um, but no, when you have a dream and desire to do big things and I follow people that inspire me like the rock or, or like some, you know, some people that are, that they're the underwriters of people's dreams. They're, they're good people and they're doing big things. It's like, wow, that's big. And it's like, if they could do it, you know, we could, we're all come from the same, we have all that, we all have the same time, you know, we all could do the same thing. So at least I could look for my dreams and goals. We are born the same way. All of yeah. us. That's true. Yeah. Now with, uh, does 
Chris Zeno uh, do any sorts of personal developments in terms of uh, self-love, taking time off for himself? Do you do any um, uh, praying, any sorts of uh, yoga? Yeah, all of the above. Yeah, every morning. You know, I wake up early, 4, 4.30, you know, I do my treadmill time, which is my reading time, which is my lesson to my podcast time. I come home, I meditate, I do some detox protocols. That's when I read. Yeah, I mean, I'll take 24 minutes and I visualize, uh, I visualize me um, not getting my goals. I visualize myself after getting my goals, you know, how I, how I act, how I am, how I feel. And I do that for 24 minutes every single day. Wow. So yeah. you basically visualize yourself after you have achieved the goal. Yeah. And, wow. Right. So I used to imagine like, um, hey, Chris, you have $100 million net worth. Oh, like, you, like that was the end of the movie. But no, it's like, okay, how about after that? So let's say, so how would life be like if you had $100 million? I always used to tell my clients this. You have $100 million. How is it? And everybody goes like this. It's like, oh, so you got, oh, so it's relief. What else? What else? Like, why would you, okay. So you're, you're, you're more giving now. Great. So it's a lot of these things you find out there that people would do that they don't need a hundred million dollars to do. I travel. Where would you go? Italy for how long? A week. I'm like, you don't need a hundred million. No, that, you right? don't. <laughs> so you start seeing that, you know, it's like these things you could do right now. You're like, yeah, you're right. Like I could give to someone and out of the abundance of my heart, if I feel the tug to, uh, so it's after. So it's like, what happens? Those goals were achieved. You did this, you made your company, you married that person. So what's the day after look like, mm. you know? So it's like, how are you acting? What's going on? It's like, you know, are you bored? I mean, like what's, what's going on? So I, I just visualize that um, every single day, every single morning, 24 minutes. Well, uh, Dr. Zeno, this was absolutely wonderful to have you on. I am honored that you shaved off some time for us. Yeah, thank thank you. you again. And hopefully we can get you back on and talk about some more of uh, coaching and uh, definitely about yeah. stem cell. Yeah, great. I mean, thank you guys so much. If you really enjoy this, uh, just let you guys know, I'd be happy to get on. And I do have, uh, I do have something for everybody, a gift for them if they want. Um, one of my, uh, and it goes along to a lot of stuff we talked about. If you go to my, uh, my site, IamHero.com, so it's I-M-A-M Hero, H-E-R-O.com. I have a masterclass there for you guys on like a mindset masterclass. It's all free of charge. That's just my gift to you guys. I think you'll really enjoy it. It's done really well. You'll really enjoy it. And I think it'll kind of, it'll go into, it'll delve into uh, a lot of the things you might be feeling here and you can't really put words to it. And I'll help you at least be aware of it so you know it's, it's a target we can now work on and heal or break through. So I think you'll enjoy it. It's IamHero.com. Well, the, I was going to ask you as the last question that where do our viewers and our listeners find you? Oh, yeah. That, that was it right there. IamHero.com okay. or Instagram. It's at Dr. Zaino, D-R-Z-A-I-N-O. Uh, yeah, at D-R-Z-A-I-N-O. I answer all my comments. I answer all my DMs. So I do all that. So I'm very, uh, you get full access to me, uh, whatever you want. And don't be, you know, like uh, you never know what you'll get if you, if you ask, right? So make sure you, that's one thing this week, make sure you ask. If you desire something, ask, you'll be surprised what you'll get when you just ask. So uh, I'm there for you guys and we could keep this conversation going. Thank you so very much, sir. You have a great day and thank you again. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye.